How's it going guys? It's going off grid. And today we're making a video on the battery I put together from batteryhookup.com. These are the stackable cells. I have a previous video where I built this. And we're going to capacity test this. Uh, on battery hookup site they said these are approximately 40 amp hours. And this is a 16S lithium ion configuration. So we're talking about 67.2 volts full charge. We're charging it with this 16S charger which does charge to 67.2 volts at 10 amps and you can see through the BMS that we are in fact charging at 10 amps, 10.2 amps and that's just my little guy over here talking away and so we're, we're going to do two things, we're going to be testing the capacity of this battery and how well it performs at high output Just turn the oven on. 5,000 watts, guys. I don't know if you guys can see that. 4,000 plus. We went to semi square wave. But that's not bad that it took that long to get to it. Oh, we're pulling over 100 amps there. Okay, I'm not going to be able to do this for very long. Hokey smokes. Okay, I'm going to go shut that off. Actually, I decided not to shut that off because I should remember this is the 120 amp BMS. I thought it was 100 amp BMS, but holy smokes, we're pushing this thing. So, like I said before, this is most likely a 5,000 watt inverter. You take away one of the numbers in front. Oh, that was it. Something uh, popped. Oh, overcurrent. I don't know if you guys can see this on the BMS. The BMS was what uh, what shut off over current. Okay then. Well, that's too bad. I'm gonna go shut the oven off and then I'll reset. Hmm. What is going on? We got a code here. DSG. <laughs> Let's go to. Battery state. Everything seems okay. Short current times one. Discharge over current times one. Okay, so it has a couple codes. Not sure how to reset it. Hmm. It's locked me out somehow. Okay. Turn my light on here. See if we can figure this out. I have to get back to you guys in a second. Okay, let's go for round two. See what's going on here. I now have it hooked up in a totally different way. We're going to shut off. Let's see if we shut this on. Turn this on. There we go. Things are working properly now. So before, I definitely had this hooked up wrong. Most definitely. Okay, so we are bypassing the inverter completely. That does start charging. Okay, so I have this thing all figured out now. I know what I did wrong. I did have it hooked up wrong from the get-go. Nothing went pop on the inside. I thought perhaps something did. Uh, yeah. It's barely registering anything because we're not pulling much power. So you can see six amps from the battery. Battery's down to 79% already. continue with the tests. I'm going to go flip the house over to this again. Okay. So, it is making really funny sounds. I'm going to turn the fan on. I don't think it's showing the proper wattage anymore. This was this only comes from the one side, I believe. I'm not sure. I have to do the math to see if 
So 19 times 63. Let's see what that is. 19 times 63 equals. Yeah, so it's, it's not showing. This is now inaccurate. This doesn't show uh, the power being pulled on uh, split phase. This is only showing the one leg. That makes total sense. That's why it overloaded before. Because I was only pull I was pulling 5,000 watts off of one leg, which is impressive if that's the case. I'm very, very impressed with that. Um, okay, let's go back to software. Okay, so we'll just have to go by these amps because that's what's getting pulled from the battery. It's looking much cleaner on the sine wave. Uh, well, we're not pulling much power right now, but looks like, ooh, there we go. We're up to 36 amps, so that we're pulling quite a bit of power there. Not much is getting pulled from the one leg. Maybe my uh, loads on the on the uh, electrical panel are not completely even. I'm going to go turn the hot tub on in my garage right now. I keep forgetting to turn that on. So that will be an extra about... Okay, so we are pulling 31 amps. Everything's looking good. This is running my entire house, which is awesome. Pretty happy with that. So what the runtime is here. Hope you guys can see everything. See, we got 63 volts. Everything's looking okay. 38 amps, something turned on. Oh, the furnace is turned on. I believe that's what just kicked in. Everything seems to be working quite well actually on this inverter. I'm I'm way more impressed on this inverter than I was on that little 3000 watt uh, one. That one I was very much not impressed. Okay, let's see what else we can turn on. I need to turn something on that's not going to overload the BMS because the BMS can only provide it, this is supposed to be 120 amp, but at 110 amps or a read around there, it did go into overload. So I checked the BMS, it wasn't warm whatsoever. Something just turned on. We're at 42 amps now. There is quite a buzz from this transformer. But I mean, for how cheap this inverter is in comparison, it does not seem to be a bad inverter so far. I'm actually pretty impressed with it, to be honest. So how many watts are we pulling from the battery? 62.6 times 42. Let's do the math quickly. 62.6 times 42 equals, we're only pulling 2600 watts. That should be nothing for this inverter. Okay. Yeah, that should be nothing. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go turn on a burner on my oven. Back. All right. So the water pump should be turning on any minute now, and that is a huge surge. Huge surge. So we already have about 2,500 watts on this inverter and when that the water pump turns on it needs approximately 3,500 watts surge to turn it on and we're going to see how how that does. That might that might put my uh, BMS over. We'll see. Everything seems to be working so far. There it goes. That looks like the water pump just kicked in. Wow, that had no problem starting it. Very impressed. The sine waves doesn't even look that bad. A little bit of clipping at the top. Pulling 64 amps. No, oh, that, that worked really good. I'm very impressed with that. Wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna go turn the water off and then we're gonna turn the oven on and get this closer to 100 amps. Okay, so we got the 
bigger burner on now. Oh, key, that takes a lot more power. 90 amps. We got a half decent sine wave. It's clipping at the top. It looks like the burner just shut off. We'll see it come back on. There's not much fluctuation in the flickering in the lights, which is impressive. It's actually quite impressive, actually. Here it goes, 90 amps, going at what voltage, 61, uh oh, no, 60.5 volts. So you can uh, do your math, calculate that. Everything seems to be working really good, we're down to 60% on the battery. Okay, I'm going to go shut that uh, oven off again. All right, let's take a look here at the cells. How are we doing for balance? It looks like we're doing pretty stinking good. Now, uh, oh, let's go back. How many amp hours? Let's see, we got 21.3 amp hours remaining. This has been counting it down. So we'll see if this stops before we get to, to zero, or if we get to zero and it keeps running, that means that the battery uh, that I built has actually more than 40 amp hours, which is would be really nice. But we will find out. Okay, so this is what ended up happening on the battery side. At the very bottom they started separating because some cells had quite a bit more power than other cells. But it, it honestly did not do too bad. That's not bad at all. I'm pretty happy with those results. And now we are on, we are charging again. 10 amps going in. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this test. This inverter. I actually was not disappointed in it. I'm going to do a quick calculation on how good this is for the money, and I'll let you guys know.